For decades, scientists and engineers have been trying to develop faster computers and faster processing chips. Now, some scientists take this a step further by attempting to match the processing speed and memory capabilities of the fastest computer nature has to offer, the human brain. Now, this is called neuromorphic computing, and Zheng Guangcheng and his team from the University of Oxford have made their contribution in the quest to mimic the human brain by designing and fabricating an all-photonic device which mimics the synapses in our brain. Now, what are synapses, and what do they actually do? Well, in a nutshell, synapses permit neurons to send electrical or chemical signals towards one another. Now, the synapse controls the transmission of signals by a process called synaptic weighting. Now, the scientists from Oxford aim to mimic the synapses by using a waveguide integrated with phase change materials. Now, waveguides work by guiding and focusing waves by restricting their propagation to only one or two dimensions. So, what did they do? Well, they created a tapered waveguide which had islands where phase change materials were integrated onto the waveguide. Now, phase change materials are materials which easily transition from an amorphous state to a crystalline state and vice versa. Now, these islands are made up of GST or GE2SB2TE5. Now, their goal with creating this waveguide was to simulate synaptic weighting and also to have a precise control over synaptic weighting. Now, the GST islands will provide this precision. In their experiments, they first compared a standard rectangular waveguide design with a single GST island with their tapered waveguide design with multiple GST islands. Now, both devices were first heated to about 250 degrees Celsius to crystallize the GST islands. Next, a transverse electric optical field was launched at one side of each of the waveguides to see how effectively each one transmits waves. Now, they found out through their experiments that the standard rectangular waveguide design didn't transmit quite as well as their tapered waveguide design. Now they tried this experiment again by changing the number of GST islands for the standard rectangular waveguide design and comparing it again to their tapered waveguide design. Now they found out that their tapered waveguide was still better. They also found out that the tapered waveguide offered a gradual decay in the electric field with little evidence of resonance while other designs allowed the electric field to decay rapidly. Now this is shown by the dark blue line at the middle of the graph. Another thing that they found out was that they could precisely raise or lower the synaptic weight using a fixed number of fixed duration, fixed energy optical pulses down the waveguide. Now these scientists already have a patent and it was published last March. The patent was for the waveguide and for a phase modulating element in order to control the waves which would pass through the waveguide. Now, one of the more interesting details of their study is their use of GST as their phase change material to regulate the transmission of waves. Now, GST is an example of what is called calcogenide glass. Now, this type of material is widely used in the computing industry as a means to store non volatile photonic memory and it is commonly seen in rewritable CDs and even some computer chips. Now what makes this material so useful for memory storage is that it is readily available to transition to a crystalline or to an amorphous state. So maybe in the future, these synapses which employ this material could be the backbone for CPUs and other computing devices everywhere.